Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another gun video. I've got something cool for you guys. For those of you who are looking for a compact and handy firearm that is still just as capable as a full length 12 gauge or tactical shotgun, the quick answer that comes to mind is the bullpup shotgun. So here I have the ATI Bulldog, a 12 gauge bullpup shotgun from American Tactical. So I wasn't really looking into getting another gun, but I figured if I had a little bit of extra play money, why not just put in a bid on Gun Broker and see what happens. So that's why I have this. So I figured uh, I'd get my first uh, semi-automatic shotgun. The other two that I have are pump actions and why not get the bullpup? It's pretty, pretty fun, right? It's a nice range toy. I don't know yet if we would consider them, uh, this one as a good, good enough uh, home defense gun because you know sometimes it's just not reliable unless you make sure you're shooting the right rounds that are going to cycle the gun right but anyways let's just go over this initial impression so far when i first grabbed the gun out of the box and i put my hand on the grip i noticed immediately that it's a very thin grip and maybe not so ergonomic for most people for me it it's slightly not ergonomic but i have maybe medium-sized hands and i think It'll work, but I don't know. We're, we'll see what it's like when I go shooting because it is kind of thin up here. That's probably my only gripe here, but uh, maybe maybe they could have done a little bit better on maybe making it a little beefier or more comfortable around this curve into the uh, the webbing of your, your hand. But other than that, um, the gun feels pretty, pretty balanced. I mean, you, I can easily pick this up with one hand and uh, point it and shoot it. And it seems pretty comfortable just resting right here on the uh, outside of my chest. By the way, the gun is unloaded, obviously. Why would I put a loaded gun in this video, right? Because everyone's going to yell at me and say, Oh, you shouldn't point the gun at the camera, whatever, whatever. So the gun's unloaded. Anyway, now we can continue on with the video. Let's just start with the buttstock, right? So the buttstock has this really solid rubber grip or pad on it. Sorry, it's not a grip, but it could be a grip, a grip to your, your shoulder, right? I haven't shot it yet, so we'll see how comfortable that is. But you know, in general, I don't really have an issue with that. I mean, it could be solid plastic and uh, it would work for me. We have an adjustable cheek riser here, which you can see uh, has this wing nut, basically. You can just unscrew that, lower it or raise it how you want. I personally prefer it down all the way and I might even just take it off because for me, um, I, I really can just put my eye right here and I can see perfectly through the sights. Um, let's talk about how you hold a shotgun. Some newcomers or new people will think, oh, you got to put it on the on your shoulder way out here and then, you know, bring your, your head down to the to the stock and look through the sights. But no, it's really uncomfortable and you're really going to hurt your arm and you're going to get some neck pain probably too. So the way you should do it, basically pick up the gun. I mean, stand straight up, put the gun out here and just bring it straight back. And for me, what works great and what works for a lot of good, a uh, lot of people is put it right here on just on the outside of your pectoral muscle. And when you bring in your arm, you kind of create a pocket for that stock to rest into. Then bring your arm up and then with your head, just move it forward onto the gun. Don't just put it down like this, but if you just move it forward, move your neck forward, you can easily get a good sight picture on the, on the sights. And then if you can see how I have my left arm, I kind of have it pointed out just because when you get some recoil, your arm doesn't bend this way. But if your arm was like this, your arm bends this way, right? So this, holding it like this and getting a nice good C grip, C clamp grip on it will really help you prevent the muzzle from rising too much out of your control, okay? All right, so that's not part of the gun, but that's just, Basically, I just wanted to get that out there because some people have asked me that. Here we've got a hole for a QD sling mount, it looks like. Up here at the top, there's not or there's not a place to, to attach the other one on or the other side of the sling on. You probably have to get a, a uh, accessory here for the Picatinny rail to clamp the other side of the sling on it. And it does say on here, American Tactical, Somerville, South Carolina. So the company is American or the gun is produced in Turkey. As you can see on this side, Pars Turk. Here you've got a really aggressive magazine release, 
which we'll check that out later once we bring the magazine out and try it. And it is a 12 gauge three inch chamber here. So you should be able to shoot three inch shells pretty easily. My experience from three inch shells is that once you shoot them and you ex and, and the tips expand because you shot the load, now it's larger than three inches. And sometimes they those kinds of shells don't really eject even though it says three inch shells. So we'll try that out and see what it's like on the range. Here it looks like you got a deflector, a pretty big deflector over the chamber here. And it looks like you can take it off or remove it if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to. Maybe you're collecting the shells and you can attach something to the gun that way. But yeah, it is removable. It's just a looks like a plastic piece that just gets screwed onto the gun. Here we have the uh, charging handle, AR style. One thing I noticed is that you cannot pull this back if you pull only on one side. So the drawback to that for me is if I'm shooting and something's wrong and I need to really quickly rack the gun or cycle it, I can't pull it back like this. You have to actually take two fingers and pull it down because it has two latches here on each side of the, the top here. So, so when you're out on the gun range and you need to cycle your gun, you're going to have to make sure that you do two hands. It does feel like it hurts a little bit on your fingers. If you're using gloves, maybe not so bad, but um, at least it seems easy to uh, pull back and let go. We've got three pins, by the way. There's one pin that's behind this cheek riser, the second one here and the third one there. That's an easy way to take down the gun. We won't get into the takedown yet today. I'm, I'll make a separate video for that when I need to clean this. The trigger, by the way, is very like AR-15 ish. The reset is just very similar. It doesn't feel like a shotgun trigger where they're like really springy or slap or spongy on uh, some semi-automatics. I'm referencing the Panzer BP-12 that I know about. And it's not like a uh, Mossberg 500 where it's kind of like a slap the trigger kind of thing. So this one does feel more like an AR-15, which is really nice because I think you can get really good follow-up shots on it. So we'll go ahead and try it. Nothing in it, obviously. So I'll go ahead and pull the trigger and I'll hold it there and I'll show you guys the reset. And it's not that far actually. And then so you don't have to travel, your finger doesn't have to travel far to um, make quick follow-up shots either. Here you've got Picatinny rails all around the handguard, you know, on the bottom and the side and the top. And uh, let's talk about the sights. So the rear sight could only go, th these are polymer sights that came from ATI in the box. The rear sight could not be placed on from the rear. I had to place it on over the top and slide it all the way down. Let's keep that in mind because if you install this first, which I did, I had to take it off again and put this and then in order to be able to put this on. And in order to put this on, I needed to use a rubber mallet because these are polymer and it's got really tight tolerances. And I couldn't just slide it on. I had to use a, a rubber mallet just to bang it all the way down in there. And so I got that on, tightened it up, and I'm pretty sure that's not going to come off now. They do seem pretty solid. The polymer sites, I don't think they have a major risk of breaking over a typical normal use. Um, everything is, the sites are protected by the top here. Uh, the, the front sight also is pretty sturdy. I mean, uh, that's screwed on there tight, but in general, I mean, the plastic seems very, very strong or polymer. It's probably uh, glass filled anyway, which it looks like it is because you can see the glass fibers in it. And they are adjustable. And here you can see that you can adjust the sights for uh, close range and long range. The front sight is also adjustable. Here we've got M-lock slots as well. So if you have something M-lock, that will fit, that should be able to fit easily here on the uh, rail as well. And the muzzle in here, this is just an aesthetics device with a bunch of holes in it, probably to help lighten the weight and maybe also help assist cooling the barrel down. This will just twist off so that you can remove the handguard and everything during uh, disassembly and cleaning. Also, you have a uh, safety here, which seems uh, like a typical shotgun safety. Uh, red, obviously, safety off, safety on. So that's basically my initial impression right out of the box of the firearm. Everything seems really good. I'm excited to shoot it. And like I said, the only complaint maybe is, or slight improvement they could do is maybe with the grip. Just so you know, I did get this shotgun based on the grip because most shotguns had a more of a severe angle pistol grip. I didn't like that or want that. I wanted more of a, a 90 degree this way uh, angled grip because if it was like this, I feel like it's more of a strain on the wrist. Whereas here, I think it's more comfortable to hold the shotgun that way. So definitely like the grip angle as well. Okay, let's take a look at what came in the box. 
We'll set this down over here in the nice fancy gun rack that I built out of pallet wood, by the way. So it comes in a cardboard box that has the American Tactical name on it, the website on it, and uh, we'll open it up for you guys to see. It comes with a nice uh, foam layer on top that was like this. The gun came packaged in a plastic bag and it comes with some tools for disassembly. This is gonna be used for the piston and uh, this is the spanner wrench. And then you got the Allen wrench here. Comes with a one five round magazine. Comes with these uh, locks that nobody really uses. Cause how are you gonna use your gun if it's locked up, right? Um, I usually use those in the gym for my gym locker. And then this was in the, the chamber, chamber flag. Comes with an instruction manual. Basically, most of it is just don't do this, don't do that. Um, that's eight full pages of that actually. And then it finally tells you how to uh, load the shotgun, unload the shotgun, uh, shows you the part breakdown, at least so you know when you need to, if you need to order a part, at least you know the name of it and where it goes. And disassembly, reassemble uh, instructions, and uh, that's it pretty much. So these are your chokes. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And these are the plastic bags that it came with. So let's put this down. Okay, real quick, let's talk about the chokes. The gun does come with one choke already inside of it. And the choke that's inside of it has uh, five notches. And that is the cylinder choke, which matches the cylinder bore of the barrel. And then you get a couple more. And here we have the three notches, which is the modified choke. And the other one is a single notch, which is the full choke. So good if you want to shoot some, some game with it or go hunting with it, I guess. But I um, have a designated hunting gun. I probably won't use those much other than maybe just to try to have some fun with pattering buckshot. And it comes with a choke wrench that should fit pretty easily. Yep, all right. So you can easily twist that on and off, which I like a lot. That's a very comfortable choke wrench, which not a lot, not a lot of guns have. And it just goes back into the carrying case just like that. You have some extra um, slots for more chokes if you want. Comes with a nice picture there of how to, which one's uh, best for what application. Now we can get to the magazine, right? So the magazine's empty. And if you notice the design of the magazine, uh, similar to a lot of other um, bullpup shotguns that I've noticed, even with the Panzer BP-12, I think these are the same magazine types for that anyway. Um, it has like a little bit of a, a plastic rise here for your hand because if you notice there's a Picatinny rail slot here with a little button here to lock it on and unlock it from the rail of your shotgun so you could use it as a pistol grip. I don't recommend using this as a pistol grip because it's really hard to get on and off so make sure you take a rubber mallet with you out in the field if you're uh, going to need your gun in a hurry or <laughs> keep it on you on as an extra uh, part of your EDC if you're using it if you're using this gun as uh, home defense. So let's just show you. Uh, I mean, the tolerance of this magazine is really tight. Just try and slide over the, the rail. Ugh. And I wouldn't say this is a user error or anything. I mean, I know how these work and I've been around firearms for a while. So there we go, got it started. So now we get it to here, then you have this uh, button that you're gonna have to push in in order to slide it down even more. which I can't even do it. Oh, I got it. Okay, so it went on kind of too far because I didn't hear it lock into the uh, rail. But anyway, let's just say you're, uh, so now you're holding it like this, which I'd still put my elbow out and maybe you still got a good, good grip on it. But in any case, um, how do you get this off in a hurry when you need it, right? To save your life or whatever, because <sighs> It's not coming off. That's why you need your rubber mallet. And it's probably gonna lock because of the, uh, <laughs> the button here. Yep. So make sure you push that button while you're trying to take it off. I mean, how are you gonna push, hold the button down and still slide it off? It's a pain in the butt. I hate doing this on my nice fancy uh, whiskey cabinet barrel that I just built. 
So anyway, I'll do this in fast motion so that we can speed this up. Okay. A few more hits. Okay. <laughs> and if you notice, which I'm not sure you did, we got flakes of plastic everywhere uh, coming off from something. Probably looks like the magazine because this is steel and metal in the plastic. So you're probably just going to have to wear this in on the gun just to uh, get it to slide on easily in the future, right? So I'm not going to use it. It's a pain in the butt. Plus it's my only magazine right now. So here we'll do it this way. So it has a, a lever here thing or whatever that will spring back and it'll go away when you load the, the, the rounds. But when that comes up, that lets the uh, bolt, that holds the bolt back to let you know that it's empty. You really have to get it in like in a spe spe ah, specific way it looks like. Okay, <laughs> use your error first time, uh, the second time, right? Anyway, so the, now the magazine's in there. Again, you pull this back. There's that lever in there that'll hold the bolt back so that uh, you can see that it's empty and uh, this will sl freely slide back and forth. But if you have it loaded, then you just pull, pull it back and let go and it'll uh, cycle around. You also have this magazine release or the bolt, sorry, the bolt catch release right here, just like on a typical AR-15 platform. Push that like a man. <laughs> okay, women can do it too. And then the bolt slams forward. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section what you think. Basically, that's my initial overview out of the box of this firearm. And uh, stay tuned for more of the summary of this gun. ATI has justifiably carved out its place as a manufacturer of typically more affordably priced firearms, outperforming their price point in the gun industry. Made in Turkey, the Bulldog itself is not yet a Made in America model, but that does nothing to lessen its performance. It's produced in Turkey, but with ATI specs. It's just like anything else you buy, such as a car. Many car manufacturers have the same suppliers as well. The Bulldog officially launched at the 2020 SHOT Show. The idea behind the bullpup design is to decrease the overall length and increase maneuverability in close quarters. It also means that you get a longer barrel in a platform with a shorter over overall length, meaning greater velocity without sacrificing its CQB usefulness. It also means you get a longer barrel in a platform with a shorter overall length meaning greater velocity without sacrificing its CQB usefulness. The Bulldog has an overall length of 26 inches and a barrel length of 18 and a half inches, keeping it within non-NFA guidelines. It's chambered in 12 gauge and takes shot shells up to three inches in length. It features include an AR platform style charging handle, adjustable cheek riser and rails that are both Picatinny and M-Lock. The gun ships with a trio of choke tubes, removable open iron sights, and a five round magazine. They designed the Bulldog so a spare magazine can be attached to the Picatinny rail beneath the handguard, allowing it to be used as a forward grip. For me, I would advise not using it because it is ridiculously difficult to put it on the rail and take it off should you need it quickly. The Bulldog's trigger is more mil-spec AR-like than a shotgun-like trigger. It's effective for its use and platform without grit or excessive travel. And if you are a fan of running shotguns fast, then you can definitely rapid fire this gun accurately. So to go over the specs, the manufacturer is ATI. The model is the Bulldog. The platform is a bullpup. The gauge is a 12 gauge. Barrel length, 18 and a half inches. Overall length, 26 inches. Chamber is three inches. It comes in a variety of colors, black, FDE, or OD green. Some of the features are Picatinny and M-Lock rails, adjustable cheek riser, removable and adjustable open iron sights. Ships with a five round magazine and a three piece choke tube set. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, go ahead and click subscribe, like the video. And if you don't like the video, go ahead and click the dislike button two times. The next video I'll make of this gun will be out on the range. So make sure you pay attention to see when that video is out. A rock, paper, scissors, buckshot. The crazy never die. What's up guys? Welcome back for another.
Take three. Take number four, just in case the first one sucked. Uh, it twists off so that you can disassemble the gun, which you gotta be really strong. Okay. I'm just playing with you guys. Yeah. Let's slide that in there. I'm going to need a little bit more practice to get that in, right? <laughs> 